None of us really thought that it was going to be a huge deal. People aren't as afraid of things to say online than they are in real life. I completely have a character on camera. And it's crazy how fast. I mean, I would say within an hour, it was just, it was out there. They all knew him from social media. Social media has taken basketball to a whole nother level. I felt the need to use my social media to say like, hey, this was a serious problem. Yeah, that was the scariest moment of my life. I like, actually thought like I was gonna die. Social media platforms have become popular around the world with a more technologically dependent society developing. And despite the damages they may cause, it's become a positive tool in the athletics realm, helping young athletes like Sebastian Garcia promote themselves. My, I go on my mom's phone most of the time and I try to check them out. And, and my mom let, lets me go on my Instagram and I asked her, I asked her if I could go to their training, I check them out, and I copy their moves. And social media has become widely accepted by mothers of young athletes, who support its use in a beneficial way to help pave the way for their children in the big leagues. Well, when Sebastian uh, started playing basketball at the age of four, and by the time he got to second grade, he told me, Mom, I, I want to play more competitive. And so I was out looking for a travel team, and first thing I thought of was, let's start a social media page, and let's... Let's see how we can find some teams. Social media is great, starting with Instagram. Sebastian gets onto my phone. He goes onto his Instagram page. He's able to find the different coaches, all his different friends that he meets through the camp. So it's a good way for him to stay connected and a good way for him to find different drills just going onto the social media pages. And Sebastian's basketball coaches appreciated the role of social media and his development as a young athlete. Oh, 100%. Social media has taken basketball to a whole nother level. Um, there's kids that you know you wouldn't know of if it wasn't for social media. So it's actually put in um, Miami basketball on a good platform. So I think it has. Um, I definitely think it's a it's a great way to reach out to colleges and universities. Um, I definitely think there should be some kind of class on on which way they they manage it because a lot of kids manage it the wrong way and it can get the wrong message out. So I think it's something that that is great, but at the same time needs to be trained and done in the right format. And athletes like Sebastian will continue to take advantage of social media platforms as they help pave the way for their futures. There are many positive ways to use social media, whether it's posting cute pictures of your dog, reconnecting with old friends, or posting pictures of your dinner. But sometimes, that post from five years ago, or even five days ago, can affect your future. Well, a photograph of some Jackson Liberty High School students wearing t-shirts that include a racially charged word has now sparked a controversy at the school. This picture was taken after the entire senior class picture was taken at the high school. My senior year, there was a picture posted that use some inappropriate words on social media. And when the picture got out onto social media and people from around the town saw it, parents, other students, etc., cetera, uh, it kind of blew up back on the person who posted it and the people in the picture. Today, students locked arms in protest, demanding the administration take action against the students who posed in the picture. Immediately after the picture was taken, the next day that we came into school, there was a protest on the bus ramp. 
uh, kids were locking their arms in like protest of what we did and what the picture said. None of us really thought that it was going to be a huge deal. I was a part of the protest that was organized and my dad was interviewed by the news when they came on the day of the incident. I don't think that the kids were necessarily thinking of what could have happened or how it could affect anyone. I think they were just trying to have, like it was a senior pick, they were just trying to be funny, have fun. I don't think they meant any harm, but, but there was definitely harm there. When students see stuff that goes on in, let's just say like the Hollywood type area, whether it's the, the music that they listen to or the, the movies that they're seeing, there's um, dialogue that happens that not, it's not necessarily appropriate for school or for work. However, um, when you put that kind of thing on social media, um, you may not know the effects or consequences that it may have um, the way someone else may see it. I did feel like guilty when I came back to school the next week and I felt kind of like ashamed walking around and seeing some of the kids who like I know were affected by the picture in class or just in the hallway. So I felt kind of like I couldn't fully like be myself after that week. I needed to like take a step back for a while. It was a positive impact at the end of the day because it really did spark like a large debate and conversation in like not only the school but like the community as a whole about diversity and like the issue of using certain words and the issue of like people thinking that things are okay even if they're not. As a result of the consequences, I do think that they understood what they did and how it affected and who it, who it affected. And I don't think they'd do anything like that ever again. We did um, actually start a diversity club uh, where kids from all different backgrounds, all different interests, all different um, cultures can join and learn the different perceptions that people have about different types of cultures. So I think that piece of it is a very valuable um, learning experience for our kids to move forward and you know we're, we're trying to get the club to grow even bigger and do more things so in that aspect it's a definite uh, value learning experience as well as the, the negative part because now kids can see that there are consequences for posting certain things on social media that may be inappropriate or perceived as certain groups as um, inappropriate and you know you have to deal with those consequences. You can't just post anything you want on social media because even if you think something's okay or you don't think something's going to offend someone else, you really don't know that. So you need to be super careful about what you say or post around other people. And uh, I'm a lot more careful about what I say around other like big groups of people now, or definitely what I post on social media. In short, social media has both advantages and disadvantages. Despite having such unique advantages, it can still be one of the most harmful elements of today's society. If social media is not handled carefully, it can lead to unwanted and long-lasting consequences. But if used properly, it can open up a whole new world and connect people like never before. I don't know the person in those videos. It's like a completely like Disney princess, a G-rated girl, and that's not who I am. So I, it almost irks me to like watch half of those videos because it's not me. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm back with the boys. Hey, hey, guy. hey guys, see, I'm already freaking out. The React series definitely was like my platform to kind of help jump me off on my YouTube career and just yeah. online career. Uh, it's a very big show that grew very quickly um, and it's a lot of fun because it's a place where it's an entire cast of diversity so you get to work with a lot of different opinions and then also it's a lot of, it's really nerve-wracking because you have to put your opinion out there and that's the most vulnerable part of you is your opinion. I think going into this I was pretty competitive in a lot of aspects because you have to get a lot of people to like you. And that's the hardest part is being yourself and being likable <laughs> to a lot of people. So it's almost like a competition every day to say the correct thing. Um, and then against also other people that are in the field, you're kind of working with them and against them at the same time. So it's kind of just a competition to get to the top all the time. I like to post 
I completely have a character on camera, my, especially when I was starting. Now I've spent my past year being a more authentic version of myself. I don't censor myself as much, but online the pictures I post, they're photoshopped. Like everything is, it's fake. Questions and I'm gonna be reading them and answering them. A lot of people in the industry, they say, don't read the comments, don't read the hate comments because that's what gets to you or, oh, we don't care about the hate comments, but it's the most human thing to really care about it. And there's always gonna be the group of people that find your smallest or your biggest insecurities and somehow dig at it. People really just see us as like a piece of meat on camera. Any entertainer, you're not human to them. They're free game. They're, everyone knows this person, therefore they're free game. But it's not true because everyone goes home to a family and it affects your relationships and it affects themselves. Like I, this year alone, I got followed home. Like someone followed me home in a car because they don't see you as a human. Like it's not okay. It's and so the only way to kind of ever express that is anger, but then they're like, that's not professional of you to be angry, so you're just always kind of a piece of meat. I think this past year alone, I've uploaded maybe like every other month I'll do one video because it's a lot to handle. Like mentally, I just, I can't handle what people have to say, so I'll, I'll step away from it. But then there's also times where I'm like, this is all I want to do, it's my passion and I love it. We're driving to the tattoo shop. It's gonna and be I'm fine. I haven't been on a challenge shop Hey guys, welcome back to my channel today. For positivity that the internet brings, it brings a lot of job opportunities, a lot of business opportunities, like for yourself, I find a lot of different ways to make money. Um, and then it's also just a really cool community building place. Like I've been able to build my own small community and they don't, I don't know if I necessarily consider them fans because I interact with them so much. Um, it's more of like a small little family and I know that like my platform is important to them because they trust each other and me so it's like a beautiful responsibility in a way I think what needs to be fixed through social media is I think everyone as a viewer has to know it's not that serious everything people say it's not that serious I think the less you take from everyone and everything is so serious then you can kind of also enjoy real life and know you don't have to be this Photoshop chick you see on Instagram. Like that's not, that's not real life. So I think the more we're, we don't hold everyone to such a standard and you don't assume that everything you see is real, nothing is that serious to you and it's just a lot healthier that way. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Social media is such a powerful tool in today's world. It's so easy to reach millions of people in just seconds with the click of a button. It's very important to spread positivity through all different platforms, and here at Corbin Middle School, we have a student who did just that. Zach Clifton knows how powerful social media can be to a campaign. That is why when he decided to run for governor at the Kentucky Youth Assembly in November, he chose to let the world know just who he was and what he stands for. KYA is called the Kentucky Youth Association. Students here at Corbin Middle School decide that they would like to participate. They come together and we do some research on bills that could be written to improve life here in Kentucky. They take those bills, they go to Frankfurt, to the Capitol, and they get to uh, debate those bills in front of the KYA assembly. I wanted to use social media as my platform because I feel like that was the most effective way to spread my message across voters from around the state. Before the election, Zach went on our school newscast, Keeping Up with Corbin, to talk about his campaign. Now we have an interview with Zach Clifton, who is running for presiding officer at this year's KYA conference. What inspired me to run for presiding officer, I feel like, is mostly my peers. I feel like I'm a voice for everyone that is in the back of the room that doesn't really have a say in what's going on. It would be very difficult for an eighth grader who is campaigning hoping to be elected governor at KYA to go to all the different parts of the state and meet his constituents. So what better way than to introduce himself than through a social media platform. If you go to Zach Clifton's Instagram, you are going to see that academia side uh, that you want in a governor, but you are also going to see the other side of Zach that you may not get to meet, the side of family, the side of fun, uh, what he likes to do in his downtime. 
I think I connected with a lot more people over social media. And there was a lot of people that I reached and that I was able to communicate with that I wouldn't have ordinarily been able to. He thought that, you know, it'd be easy if he could hand out cards with his social media info on it so he could like talk more about his campaign on his Instagram and people could message him directly if they had questions. I thought it was a stroke of genius, brilliant. Um, I mean, he was able to make contact with people through all media formats like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And um, I think that when the students rolled into KYA and he introduced himself, he had already created a real presence with them. And so I feel like that that made all the difference for him being able to win. Me and Zach were already campaigning the second we got there. As soon as schools would come in, we'd always talk to them and they all loved him. They all knew him from social media. I guess we're pretty positive to Zach and his campaign. You know, he was, he has a charm to him and you know, he had very important things in his campaign. So there's a lot of people connected with him. The response is really good because they liked like the social media aspect of it and how he would just take pictures with everybody he saw. The delegations at KYA responded very positively once Zach won because his social media, a lot of people were coming to him for pictures and stuff, so it, they made like a positive feedback for him. The KYA community responded excellently to my campaign. I think that it was, they were really pretty excited about my social media, you know. There's a lot of support on there and I think that we've connected with a lot of people and I think that most people were pretty excited about it. Now your new governor at 2020. Zach Clifton. Social media played a huge role in Zach's success. In a world filled with such negativity, social media can be the light in the darkness. As a society, it is our duty to make social media a safe, uplifting place for all, just like Zach did with his campaign. The hope of this story is to inspire people to go out and be kind to someone on social media and make this world a little brighter. Life was pretty normal. I was a sophomore at college. I went to Montclair State University as public relations major. Everything felt normal. I started getting really, really bad headaches. And my dad always got migraines, so I thought that maybe that was starting to happen to me. A nurse at my school suggested that I pick her up and bring her to the ER, but they found a tumor. They said it was about the size of a nickel in the back of my brain and it was blocking the uh, spinal fluid from getting to my brain. I was immediately rushed to the University of Pennsylvania Hospital and in two days I had that lesion removed. After she had the tumor removed the doctor was telling us that he was sure it was fine. And I had thought that once the tumor was gone, everything would go back to normal. I was even asking after my brain surgery, like, when can I go back to school? And they're like, I don't think you're going back to school anytime soon. And Cecily said the words, like, are you saying I have cancer? And they said, yes, you, you do. And from there on out, my life was never the same. <laughs> Though things seemed like they would be on the upside for Cecily, it was just the beginning. She would be going through six weeks of radiation and seven sessions of chemotherapy. The appointments at first were every single day. Like I had to leave work and um, just focus specifically on her. I would have to wear this mask and it would be screwed down into the table so I couldn't move my head. But the first thing they told me was that everywhere that you get radiation, you will lose your hair and we're doing your whole head. That was a very difficult part of my treatment, was knowing I was laying there every day, losing my hair. It was about an hour long process every day, with only about three minutes of actual radiation. I think I might do a checked back. Through her trials and tribulations, Cecily was able to impact others using social media as a positive outlet to share her story of courage and hope. <laughs> First, I was really hesitant to talk about that I was diagnosed with cancer because I didn't want other people to think that I caused this to myself. Eventually, 
I wrote online on the Odyssey about like going through a hard time, not talking about specifically what I was going through. And once I got more comfortable with it, I would share more and I would share more on my own social media, like Instagram and Facebook. A few months ago, there was a Van Kristen shortage, which is a chemotherapy that every childhood cancer uses during treatment. And it saved so many lives. And one of the biggest companies that created this drug stopped making it because they weren't getting a profit. And so I felt the need to use my social media to say like, hey, I, I needed this and so many other people need this drug. I had people like help me sign petitions and get the word out that this was a serious problem. I'm trying to get CJ to love soccer. I finished treatment September 18th um, and everything went really well. My cancer is gone and I'm starting to feel a lot better. She can do anything. She's my hero. Here in the Santa Clarita Valley, social media is as big as it is everywhere. No matter where you go in town, people can always be found glued to that slab of glass stored in their pocket. Social media is often seen as more of a burden than it is a tool in modern society. With cyberbullying, unrealistic body images, and false proclamation of the ideal lifestyle, it's pretty apparent that the most time we spend on social media, the more flaws we see than the benefits. What is often overlooked in the application of social media is its utility in times of crisis. Again, students leaving the campus here. Some sort of incident occurred. All we've gotten confirmation, our assignment desk, Tony and Aroxia, is that there was a report of a gun on campus. That's After a 16-year-old student gunned down two classmates, opening fire with a 45 caliber handgun, his motive remains a mystery. I'm Audrey App with this Variety Update a shooting at a Southern California high school early Thursday morning. This is another example of shots fired and police officers running in the direction of those shots fired. I'm Nick DePaco and I was at Saugus High School during the shooting. During the shooting, I texted my parents that I love them and both my sisters just to like tell them what was happening and like that I was okay. Yeah, that was the scariest moment of my life. I like actually thought like I was going to die. Like that was, that was like, Saugus High School recently suffered a horrific shooting on school grounds, but the implication of social media not only act as a tool providing news for the students on campus, but also as a form of communication to family and friends outside the school. I'm Erica Derry, and I am a parent of a Saugus student. So it was good to get information that I know was kind of live streaming information up to date on what was going on on the campus that I obviously didn't have access to at the time. There was a lot of information coming really fast, so if anything, I noticed that if there was information that maybe wasn't correct, it was kind of quickly being updated and changed and like corrected, so that was kind of nice, but you still felt like you were getting the information as it was happening, which as a parent was comforting and helpful to know because we were so removed from the actual campus and our children. Yeah, I think like all the vigil and stuff, it showed how like the community came together and like everybody really cared about us and showed support and like how like Saugus High School is a family and we were able to bring together everybody. It was great to see it, especially through like social media and the internet, how like we were able to like connect with the rest of the world and people were like able to show us that they cared and like we were able to get support from all over like yeah. After the shooting, how all the schools in our like district came together and showed support and like showed that we were like cared about and welcome like at other schools. The shooting at Saugus High School will be remembered as a vessel bringing the community closer together. Other local schools in the Santa Clarita Valley responded and offered sanctuary to the student body at Saugus High School.
On November 14, 2019, a tragic shooting occurred at Saugus High School. The Santa Clarita community was broken, but people began to come together in different ways and make our community whole again. One West Ranch High School student, Nicole Augusta, stepped up to find a way to bring people in our own town together, especially the high school students who needed it more than most. I think the huge turnout really was important in showing our strong sense of community that we have here in Santa Clarita, even though we're all rivals and sometimes during football season we're against each other um, and we're constantly in competition, it shows that especially in light of tragic events, how important a strong bond is and how the schools of Santa Clarita do have that strong bond and that we're strong enough to recover from something like this. By changing the theme of the game, Nicole knew this would be a great way to begin the healing process. But since there was no school on Friday, she knew the most effective way to get the word around was through social media. And we just started posting on every um, avenue of social media, on Twitter, Snapchat, um, Facebook, Instagram, everything. And it's crazy how fast. I mean, I would say within an hour, it was just, it was out there. And it gave something for the students to like, okay, now we can start working on this. Everybody wanted to help and do something positive. It was the coolest thing to see this whole thing evolve. As tragic as the incident was at Saugus, it just was amazing to see um, the community come together. Social media has had a great power in today's society. It can be used for both good and bad reasons. Luckily, Nicole was able to find a great way to use its power in bringing together an entire community for a history-changing game. Social media was a huge part of it, not only in reaching out to our own ASB, but reaching out to Saugus and Canyon, and Canyon was actually a huge help in setting up before the game. And it was also a critical part of advertising the theme change to other schools and West Ranch students because we opened up the gates to anyone from any school to come and support, and the theme change was very significant. And without a bulletin or West Ranch TV to advertise it, Social media was key because so many people use it, especially in this day and age. The power of all the high school students coming together for a West Ranch football game shows how even though such a huge tragedy can cause a great deal of heartbreak and sadness, people still find ways to rise up after and show the strength and unity. Well, I think it was, uh, it was amazing to step on the field with everybody and look up and just see a sea of blue uh, fans in the crowd. I think definitely it was awesome to see the whole community come together and get behind something after such a tragic event. Since social media is a part of almost everyone's lives, especially younger generations, we should be using it for good reasons and ways to bring people together, not to tear them apart. Nicole is one of the reasons the game was so impactful, and she was able to do it through her good intentions with the power of social media. Today, crescendoing pop artist Riley Risa creates music that places a forte on light beats with memorable melodies. A motif underscored within all her music is her positive message to stay true to who you are. However, her musical career began in an unexpected way. Every day when I walked into school during my freshman year and a little bit of my um, sophomore year, um, I was always afraid to see the people who were like rude to me and mean to me and sometimes I even like stayed home from school because I was just so scared. In person it wasn't like the typical bullying I guess I would say. It was just like mean girl behavior. I was being left out of things. Um, a lot of talking behind my back, making fun of me for not going with the crowd. For Riley eventually, the hurtful comments began to transcend the walls of high school. Worst cases of bullying began to surface online. A lot of people would post things about me um, on their accounts, especially on Instagram, and just making fun of like what I would post and be like, oh, like she's so weird, why would she post that? And I saw a lot of that because some of my friends would send it to me and it really hurt me. So yeah, people aren't as afraid of things to say online than they are in real life. Instead of listening to their hurtful comments, Riley did something counterintuitive. She wrote a song. It was really easy because I was just expressing my emotions and exactly what I felt. And so I just thought back to how I was feeling when um, people were saying all those mean things to me. And um, I wanted to make other f people feel better and like they weren't alone when they heard the song. So I tried to incorporate that into it too. 
The song, titled Broken, shares not only Riley's story of overcoming cyberbullying, but encourages others to overcome their own struggles in life. A lot of um, young girls started to message me on my Instagram and leave comments on YouTube and just tell me how much that the song meant to them. Um, even one time when I was performing somewhere, um, some guy came up to me after I sang Broken. He was like, thank you for that song, it really helped me. Um, and apparently he had just gone through a divorce and it was really helping him at the time. Since releasing the single, Riley has amassed a following of over 10,000 on Instagram alone. While this may not be the biggest following, Riley feels the responsibility as someone of influence. I want to make people know that they're not alone and that um, what they're feeling, other people feel too. And not everyone is happy, especially with social media. Everyone sees all the time people smiling, happy, the best parts of their lives, and that's just not real. And the message Riley would most like to leave her audience with is this. Everyone is beautiful in their own way. And don't listen to the hate. Just think about all the positive things in your life, and that will really help you. Riley will be graduating in the spring of 2020. In the meantime, she looks forward to releasing more original work that acts in her love for music.